True Techno Gamer here and back for another one right before the end of the year. This is the one, y'all. I'm so excited about this video. I've um, been building up to this now for the last two years. So I'm going to take you guys through my home theater as it stands here in December of 2023. The last time I did one of these was September 2021. And I did uh, initial kind of very, very early look in January 2021. So when I showed that video, I kind of did a flashback in the beginning. If you guys have seen that to show what that transformation looked like going from January to September that year. In the last two years, there has been a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of changes to the space. Um, and I can't wait to go through it with you guys. Um, I think this is cool. This is what this channel really was all about. And when I conceived it, especially from the home theater perspective was, you know, chronicling my journey. I call it the journey to end game. You know, I've been in doing this and been into home theater and buying stuff from, you know, over 20 years now. It is a journey. I have changed. My life has changed tremendously, you know, along the way. But I think it's really cool to see and for me to share practical thought processes, practical considerations, being a dad, being a husband, you know, working around the space that you have you know, for your living arrangements, apartment, housing, whatever, um, and use cases. You know, I've stressed that over and over again on my channel that I have a certain use case that may not apply to everyone else, right? Um, everyone else may not share the exact same use case. My space down, down here is meant to be a recreation room that has to cater to adults and children, you know, comfortable for myself, you know, for my immediate family, open enough to handle a good number of guests, right? And everyone along the way can have fun, you know, and it's something for everyone. That's not necessarily the use case for everybody, right? If you have a dedicated home theater where you just want to watch movies and you have an enclosed space, um, perfect dark lighting, you know, whatever, that's one thing. If you have just a two channel, you know, audio file, high end music setup that you want to do, hi-fi listening, um, just your equipment and your speakers and a single chair, that's a whole nother use case. You know what I mean? So um, I've been trying to do this kind of jack of all trades and that really, really matters in terms of my decision making, um, the equipment that I ultimately chose to get, that sort of thing. So I think it's important, you know, it's great and it's important to really see that everyone is not going to share the same, you know, the same exact process, same exact thought process that I may have, they might not have the exact same use case that I may have. Um, but some of you guys, I'm sure, probably can relate and fit into the same things that I had to think about when I did this. So in the last two years, um, again, big and small, lots of changes. I don't want to spoil it here. So I'm giving you guys just a, a, a little window here, um, but I'm going to take control of the camera and kind of just go handheld, same way I did before and kind of walk through everything. Lots to talk about, guys. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this one before the end of 2023. Um, I'll probably have another video at least to kind of summarize and kind of put a bow on a lot of this stuff. But, you know, the, the really key here, guys, is I've been in this space now for five years, over five years now, um, and my kids are getting older, right? And, you know, um, I, I've been maturing. So I feel like I'm pretty much there, right? I mean... This in this space, right? In this space, I can move and that changes everything, but at least in this space, and, and in terms of the equipment that I wanted, I'm pretty much there. I am pretty much at my end game. I mean, the space is what I had envisioned it to be five years ago when we were moving in here, and I have a lot of the equipment that I had hoped and envisioned that I could have along the way. That's what I mean. Um, but I'll talk about that when we get into the details. Please like, subscribe if you have not already. Let me know what you think. Let me know, you know, what do you think of this overall journey and decisions that I've made and what you think of the room? Please share me, share with me your room, your photos, you know, your channel. I'm all for it. I really want to see it. So without further ado, here is my home theater, December. All right, guys. So here we are. My home theater, December 2023. I've um, done a whole lot. And I'm going to try to focus this video on the things that I've changed. I may touch on some things that were there already. I'll talk about my thought process and my decision making. And um, there's a whole bunch of stories around a lot of the work that I've done, a lot of the upgrades. So um, to keep this video reasonable 
I'll try to, you know, only touch on the highlights, but uh, I'm gonna do what I did previously and start from the top of the stairs immediately. Um, you may notice some things. So um, I'll probably show a little bit of a rewind to just show what this looked like two years ago in September, 2021, even from this view. And then I'll show the room. Um, as well. So again, we'll see the transformation. Some of this stuff will get cleared out and we'll get some others, other stuff in here. But for now, uh, here's what I'm working with in terms of like my home theater space. Um, and you know, yeah, just remember this is pretty, pretty bare bones right now. Um, but, um, and then there you see one surround speaker and here we are. So this is, um, this is a basement, um, you know, space and I'm, it's basically a rec space that I'm kind of using for the theater. Uh, I don't have a dedicated theater room. Um, part of that is intentional. Um, I probably could do it if I really, really wanted to in, in this house, but um, at least for now, uh, it's not high on my to-do list. So we'll walk through it um, again as well. This space. You guys can see that. So now without further ado, let's get to it. Now, as I'm in the stairwell, you probably notice the first major difference as already. Um, and that is that I finally got this basement painted. <laughs> and of course, if you guys know, painting makes a dramatic difference, especially for like a home theater space to get the colors dark and, and so forth. So um, it adds a lot to the space. So we're in the stairwell now and, um, you know, we got the painting there. I think from the previous video, this Dolby sign was not located here either. So somewhere in the past two years, I moved it here. That's kind of more of an entrance thing. Um, so that's cool. This is December. Christmas time, so we just got the Christmas stuff out. So there's a little Christmas tree. And our elf has already arrived. Okay, so you can see the color difference there. Wow, right? You guys just seen that video before. This is what the back room looks like. This is what the home theater space looks like. All right? Oh, man, look at this. I mean, I, just taking me back looking at it with you guys. Wow. Look over here in the corner. There's some stuff, y'all. Did some stuff. Okay. It's like where to even begin. Um, a lot of it is aesthetics, uh, obviously. And then, of course, in the last two years, it's been also a good number of very significant <laughs> um, equipment upgrades as well. Now, let me probably start back here in the rec area and, and kind of talk more about the aesthetics. So if you, you know, watch the other video, even in the beginning part, if you listen to me, I said a lot of specific things that I wanted to do with the space was to make it more of a rec room, make it something that can cater more to adults. Um, as you saw, it was basically kid zone back here, you know, throughout 2021 and into 2022. Um, and you see that that's pretty much gone now. And um, it's awesome. You know, there's, this is a space that can now be much more relaxing for adults, for sports nights, for you know, um, just social gatherings, even for kids, for play dates, it's still kid friendly, you know, as you can see. And I'll kind of show a glimpse of like the kids playroom and kind of how that's their dedicated space now. Um, so, yeah, that was a big focus for me. Right. You know, with the way that this room was before, it really wasn't very um you know, it wasn't catering to just having guests over. You know, I would be very self-conscious. If you remember, I had these four chairs here, but that was it. And then I had like the sofa over here in the corner, but it's obviously in a pretty awkward position in terms of watching anything on the screen. But it was usable, sure. And that was it. So I've done, you know, some meaningful things here to make it so that more people can be in here comfortably, kids and adults as well. And there's just more stuff to do, okay? So let's start back here. Now, I've obviously... Move some things around in the space. That chair that was over in the front is now back here to kind of <clears throat> add some seating for this back space. That chair is also important because it's a futon. So a lot of times when we have company or have guests and family and friends or whatever, that's kind of the main place, you know, that it's easy, right, to just lay that down without having to bring out, you know, an uh, air mattress or something, but um, which we can do. Uh, but, you know, that's an easy spot. So it's also good. They're still kind of in the corner, kind of isolated, Um you know, so that's part of the reason for the location there. Now, um, let's look at this since I'm focusing on it now. This is an awesome thing. So this is a triad three-in-one pool table 
air hockey table and ping pong table in one, three in one. Um, and it is really awesome. It's really high quality. Um, this isn't like a toy by any stretch of the imagination. In fact, everything that I have in this basement, I will never forget. I would say that that was probably the most strenuous and difficult things to get, to get down here and to unbox, believe it or not. It was super, super heavy. It was a, it was really challenging for me and my, my one uh, friend to help get unboxed, but we did it. Um, very, very solid wood construction. Um, you know, again, it's a three in one, which is both the, the blessing and the curse here. Um, I love the fact that it's black and it matches, you know, the decorum very, very well. It's kind of hard to find a black pool table like this. It's really, a, you know, a cool thing, though, and I, and I really love what it does and how it brings things out here. Um, I also mentioned before that I wanted to get some arcade machines, kind of have a little retro feel. Um, I'm an 80s baby, so I definitely know the arcades was sanctuary to me. Um, so I do have just two here, one-up machines. Um, these are really cool. They're a little smaller screen, but it's like the full arcade feel. Um, joysticks, the buttons, they have the artwork. And these are not just one game, so I know it says NBA Jam, but you can kind of see here, this is actually three versions of NBA Jam. The Tournament Edition and Hang Time as well is built in. And then Marvel vs. Capcom 2, the whole Versus series from Capcom was like, you know, my just joy for arcades for years. So this is really cool for me to be able to have this Marvelous Capcom 2. But it, again, it also has, it doesn't show it all here, but it also has, it has a, I think it has like 11 games. It's like all of the first, every game from the Versus series pretty much. Marvel vs. Capcom 1, X-Men vs. Street Fighter, and Marvel, vs., Marvel Super Heroes, and all of that stuff. So it's cool. My son loves it. He's a game addict like like his dad. Um, so he loves it. And kids can come have play dates that they can play it as well. And some of the adults, you know, kind of have a good nostalgic trip um, doing that. Um, this is, I have to call this out because this is like, <laughs> so this is actually the newest edition down here, but it's also the most popular by far. Everything I have down here. Um, this is the universal hit with my kids, my wife, my in-laws, my my nieces and my mom, like everybody of all ages love this thing. And it's so interesting to me because, yeah, I mean, you've seen in the other video, I always had some kind of basketball down here for my kids and mainly my son because, he, you know, to play. And, I, you know, I love to grab a ball, shoot around. I've always had something basketball related in my house. Um, this was kind of like the step up, you know, um, and I thought it would be cool to have a game, you know, that keeps score and you can have little competitions. But it, I did not expect it to be the hit that it is. My wife loves it. So it says it's a, it's a stress reliever for her. You know, my, my mother-in-law was here and got addicted to it. Uh, it's, it's crazy. But it's cool because it's so accessible for all ages. So, again, kids, play dates, they come here, they can do it. And adults can come here and do it as well. So, Papa Shot. <laughs> it's like that thing right now. It's, it's the business here. Um, so that's kind of like this backspace. Even little additions, you know, it's cool to have some seating there. Little additions like this fridge. I always, I had said I wanted to get a fridge down here. I got a fridge and freezer that has, you know, key drinks, bar drinks, you know, stuff like that, that, you know, we can kind of really keep it, keep it, um, you know, down here. Um, and then, yeah, even having this trash can sounds simple, but I didn't have a trash can out here for years. <laughs> well, at least not out here in this section. Um, so that was cool to get. Now, this is uh, a really important addition to the, to the room. And I also think it's a really cool one uh, aesthetically. So this is a bar table. Um, I actually got the bar table from, I was just looking online at like, I wanted obviously something that was gray and black to kind of match my you know color scheme down here. Uh, it took a while looking at things like Wayfair, of course, and just, you know, every everything furniture-wise. I wound up getting this from a, from a website called Liftad. Liftad. Um, and they have a lot of cool modern, like specifically like their style is kind of more modern. And they had the size that I want. So I measured out the width of, you know, the chairs there. And I was like, I want something that not necessarily covers the whole thing, but it has to be wide enough where it feels like. It could be a second row feel, right, for the home theater. And this is a really, you know, obviously a much cheaper <laughs> and easier way to integrate the second row. You know, in the last video, I talked about, you know, the HVAC here, kind of how, to, how it separates the room. And now the color scheme with the painting does a great job of doing that as well. 
and I could have got a second row, but that's a lot more expensive. Yeah, you can do it yourself. You can, I could build out a way, a wood wedge layer here, but then I got to get, you know, a, a row of three more of these Valencia chairs to match in, you know, in general. And that's not cheap, you know, so this is obviously a much cheaper solution that I think works really well and is really elegant in this space. Um, so this is a lift pad, um, it's 78 inches wide, which is absolutely perfect. It's exactly the width that I kind of wanted. It kind of fits, um, touches on all four chairs, the uh, tables there can fit these also really, really nice, um, you know, chairs that I got three of them side by side. Um, they're swivel chairs. Uh, I actually got these from Wayfair, um, you know, just looking and I saw these again, really high quality, really heavy. Um, they're made by Braden Studio. Um, I think they call it Tracy Swivel Bar Stool, you know, so they fit the height of the table perfectly. Um, and I love how they swivel. So again, this is kind of meant to be like a transitional, you know, area. You could be back here eating, you know, drinking, um, enjoying yourself, watching a movie or watching sports. Um, but then you also can be here enjoying this section back here, right? The pool or the air hockey and or the basketball and, and so forth. So I love like how it's like that nice transition and it really fits into the function and aesthetic of what I was going for. So very, very important and very, very cool purchases um, for both of these as well. Here's the other major addition, um, I guess, to the to the overall look and aesthetic of the space. Um, this chair, this is the chair I got from Ashley's Furniture. Again, it's like a, you know, just a big uh, swivel chair as well, um, but it's super, super comfortable. I love how I was able to get the black leather look with the gray two-tone. Again, matches the overall aesthetic in this room perfectly, um, and it's super, super comfortable. So, you know, again, working with the limitations of the room, you know, ideally, you know, I would have it where, you know, it would be a little bit more um, in front of the TV. You know, you, you know, when you're sitting there, again, this is the OLED TV, so the viewing angle is pretty, pretty decent. So you can see, I can see, you know, the screen pretty well. Um, and it's big enough that it can accommodate two full adults, you know, a couple or, again, easily like two or three kids can, can pop in there as well. So, um, yeah, that's that's been an awesome purchase as well. So... There's that. The other, I guess, aesthetic, a different, well, okay, a couple other aesthetic differences here. So one is um, these two things. These are Moon Pod uh, beanbag chairs, all right? And I don't know if you guys heard of Moon Pod. I'll have a link there um, in the description to this video. Um, but they are basically meant to be um, kind of like flotation therapy. Um, type of, you know, really comfortable, you kind of feel like you're floating type of feel, you know, um, for chairs. And they're also, the material that you're using them is also like mendable to really have the beanbag be in three different positions. You can lay it out and lay down. You can actually kind of prop it up as a chair and kind of sit in it. And you can kind of just have it as a recliner and lean in it as well. It's pretty interesting. Um, in practice, the only thing about them, and this is probably true with beanbags in general, is that for a full size adult, you know, they're really low to the ground. They can be kind of awkward to get in and get out of. They're technically, you know, suitable for adults. But again, it's just kind of awkward in that regard. Um, but they are comfortable. No exaggeration. Every time I really just lay in them, um, I am want to go to sleep. I want to relax. Like, no question. They are actually comfortable. Um, but it's not going to be probably the first choice for a full-size adult, I think, in this space. And that's fine. What actually winds up being useful for mostly are for the kids. I have two kids, so plop. I really just, you know, we can do different things with them. They can sit in them directly. We can plop them down on the floor horizontally, like right here in front of the chairs. And they can kind of just lay in on them and, and stuff like that. They like to just jump in on them and, and, you know, jump on them and play. They call it play beanbag. <laughs> they made a game out of it. So it still gets some use. And then when it's like play dates or, you know, other people, other company that would guess that have kids, it's great because this, this can easily sit like seat like, for, you know, for kids, you know, no problem. Um, so it's pretty cool to have that. Um, so moon pod chairs, that, that again, goes into the seating thing along with the three, you know, bar um, bar stools back there. And then this seat here that can fit, again, two to three people easily. And then I still have that chair back there. The TV is still very viewable from back there as well. Keep that in mind. Uh, the other aesthetic thing you might have noticed real quick is that I did move the location of my sub. So now I have the sub in the rear right corners relative to the actual main seating. 
and then the upper left corner in this corner here. You see that? So in the previous video, my cells were in the front. There's several obvious reasons why I did that. Um, I obviously have new speakers now. We're going to get into that. You guys know that. I already showed that a little bit and talked about that, but we'll get into that. Um, these speakers are a little bit bigger, and this wall back here, as I've shown before, is, you know, has limited width. I don't want to put the speaker, obviously, like in the middle of this walkway here. Um, so, you know, I wanted the speakers to be able to breathe, and I want to be able to place them in a position that worked great for the sound. The subwoofer being there would not have worked with that. speaker would have been far, too far out. That's an obvious thing. I also planned, like, you know, from the um, point of view of the sound quality of the bass, having the bass a subwoofer in the front left and rear right, if you're using two subs, um, is just it's two of the best locations you can put a sub, to be honest. What I found is that having the subs in the front here, where they were flanking the stand, actually, the biggest null in this room from that location was in my main seats. Um, you know, and once I moved the position of the sub to the corner, uh, I was able to hear a lot more of the bass from the main seating area here. So that's just, you know, there's a, there's a practical reason, there's a functional reason, sound reason. Um, but you know, ultimately, and I always plan to do that. I actually have the wall, I have the wire for the sub pre-wired into the wall back here from when I, when they built the house you know, five years ago. So I always had planned to do that at some point. I just needed to wait till, you know, um, I can handle all the wiring and kind of knew what the overall space will look like. And, you know, that's what we were able to make work. So now the front is a lot cleaner um, and that helps. Before I get to the main equipment here, I also want to point out this beautiful thing here. So I think some of you guys, you know, that are into this stuff know what that is and probably know the brand, um, but that is a bass trap. Right for the corner, um, it's a J. It's a sorry G I K uh, acoustics. Um, it's an Alpha. It's part of the Alpha series. It's the bass trap. So I love the look. So the front is actually like a diffuser for um, the higher frequency sounds, um, and then embedded in there is the actual like thicker um, you know material for the actual absorbing of the bass. So it's not the thickest and biggest bass trap, but you know it is a bass trap. It gets the job done. Now, this is something that, you know, so this is part of the overall like soundproofing or not soundproofing, um, the um, acoustic treatments of the room, right, to overall enhance the, the quality of the sound in the room. You know, I got the uh, the main acoustic panels here um, in the last video two, year, uh, two years ago. So you guys saw that. Um, I had them up here. I added one behind the center there. That's a new, new thing. Um, but this was the main new thing. And I never had a bass trap before, you know, and I, I always question um, how useful that would be, especially in a situation where, you know, I'm trying to get more bass that I can hear. The idea of having something that will absorb bass seems kind of counterintuitive to that, right? You would think. Um, but again, they serve a very good um, uh, aesthetic purpose as well. I think it adds a lot to the look of the room here. Everyone comes in and they look at it like, wow, that looks cool. What is that? <laughs> right? They don't know, but they, they're like, it looks cool. It just draws their eyes to it. Um, functionally speaking, though, the, the thing about the bass trap, though, is that by absorbing the bass in the corner of the room, you guys know this, uh, it really should help reduce the room, mo the room notes that can come. So what happens is um, because... You know, bass will just kind of hit all around the room, reflect in the room, but they, send, they tend to concentrate in the corner. And a lot of times when they concentrate in the corner and they kind of keep reflecting in the corner, they cancel a lot of it out. So what you get is um, accentuated bass, right, in certain parts of your room and usually in that corner area. But throughout the room, you'll get these nulls that result from those, those bass notes, right? And by absorbing some of the bass there, you prevent some of that cancellation, that would happen in the corner, all right? And that's the, the the sound improvement part of this, right, that I'm trying to get. Now, in this particular space, what's interesting is that I really only have one corner to do that for, right? This isn't really a true corner because this is open. This little thing here isn't really a true corner. Um, this is not really a true corner either. And as you can see, visually, it really wouldn't work to have something like that, <laughs> right? in this little nook of a corner, right? It kind of works for the sake of putting the subwoofer there, you know, but not for like having a full bass trap over there, right? Coming back here, you know, having bass traps all the way in that corner really doesn't make sense, you know, for the home theater and the seating to be way over here. Similarly over here as well, 
wouldn't make a whole lot of sense. And I don't really have, again, I kind of separated out these two spaces. And then this is part of my stairwell. I'm not going to have anything, you know, just sitting right here. And again, it's, it's only half of a corner. So in this particular space, this is really the only true corner I have. So uh, it doesn't add too much. You know, again, it still keeps the aesthetics and keeps the, the wife um, happy um, visually with the space. Um, but I get a little bit of benefit for the main corner, right, where that's relevant to the seating area. So that turns out to be a pretty, pretty cool thing. All right. Now it's time for the main event, the main aspect of my journey to Endgame. And they are here. I have finally upgraded my speakers <laughs> and I upgrade. It is indeed. Um, these are the beautiful Paradigm Persona 7F speakers in the front, um, which is their flagship passive speaker. I love, love, love the look of these things. You, you come on, guys. Are you looking at you seeing this? Especially again with the overall color, you know, scheme, the paint job. Now the overall, you know, aesthetic. These speakers fit great, and that was like the first thing that I said and my wife said when I got them unboxed. She was like, "Oh my god, they just match this space so well." Right? They just fit so well. They look so good. The color, the size, even fits. Perfectly again, a little bit bigger. It might, you know, it might kind of crowd the space a bit, and you know, smaller. I had the speakers before that were smaller, but again, with the subwoofers going, it kind of felt a little empty. But they just fit perfectly. So this in the mid middle here is the center channel, it's the Paradigm Persona um, center. It really doesn't have much of a code. It's only one center that they make, so it's the matching center. Um, I obviously got it in the black, um, the black and the gray. You know, two tone. I've obviously went into extreme detail with these speakers in my overall thought process there. If you have not seen that, um, please check it out. I did a three part thing about my journey to end game with the speakers and my choice and decision making and choosing these speakers. Um, I will do a separate video. I know I still have to do that. Um, these speakers came in this year. I think I got them in here, what, June, July, I want to say somewhere around there. So it's been a few months now. Um, you know, I, I definitely can go in and probably give you guys a pretty good review at this point. Um, so I will try to get that out before the end of the year. Um, but needless to say, they integrate extremely well in here. They add so much to the look and, of course, so much to the sound quality of the space. Um, you know, the biggest thing I can say, the hint of, you know, my overall feel about these things is, especially with music, Every time, and you know, I don't have a whole lot of time. That's the biggest problem still. I'm just such a busy dad, husband, career career man. Um, finding the time to really just zone in, is, you know, and you guys know, you know, you know how it is. But um, every time I do sit down to listen to music, especially on this, these things, I would say, you know, sometimes I would say, okay, let me, I just want to hear this song. It's just a new song. I'm like, that would sound great on the system. Let me just throw that on there. I, I promise you, I pro I'm not exaggerating here. I have come and said, okay, I'm going to pop in a song or two, listen to music for 10 minutes, 15 minutes. And every single time I'm looking like two hours later, <laughs> like, okay, I probably just need to stop. I probably need to go to bed. I probably need, you know, whatever. Um, it draws me in that much. And I'll start hearing stuff and I'm like, well, that song was great. But wait, let me go back and hear my other song that I love again. Or let me go hear this song. Okay, let me hear what this song sounds like. And I just keep doing that. You know, so six months in almost, I'm not at all tired of them to that level. In other words, right? Like I still have that novelty factor. I still have that newness factor. I still want to listen to, you know, everything. I kind of want to go back and whip out my old CDs and, you know, like everything. Again, I would love to do that. I will do that over time. You know, I don't have all the time to do that now, um, but it draws me in every time. No exaggeration. I cannot listen to these things to really sit down and with music and relax and just not do it in less than an hour. Like, it's just not going to happen. <laughs> um, so that says a lot about them as well. Um, so I'll definitely go into more detail about these debate. But, you know, this this is the I have made it, you know, statement really for, for this space for me. So what else? Um, so a couple of things. I added some light strips in the back here. You can kind of see that um, to kind of just go when it's night. You know, I kind of have that something complement the front to go with the, the the theater lights there. But this is probably the other main thing to call out here. You guys know what this is. Some of you guys, right? This is the Blue Sound Node. This is the the, the newer one that they did the, the updated model in 2021, I believe. Might have been 2022. 
Um, so it's fairly new. Now, this is a streamer. OK, so this is a thing that can connect to the Internet and can basically give give me access to get all of the streaming apps like Spotify, Tidal, um, um, Cobalt, you know, Amazon Music, whatever, to get those streaming apps into this system. Now, that sounds like like what? You know, again, you have a sound system like this. Back in the day, you had a record player, right? You usually had your phono your vinyl thing right there, your CD or your tape deck right there connected to it. Well, when you get a system like this and you have it piecemeal, right? I have speakers, they're by themselves. I have amplifiers, they're by themselves. I have a processor, it's by itself. Like, what is the thing that gets the music, gets the stuff really into the system, right? Um, now, you know, FM and AM radio that used to be a receiver, right? Or the processor, which I guess technically still is. I have a CD player. I have the Oppo 205. I talked about that before. Um, that's my disc player, which is also my CD player as well and stuff like that. And that's, that's how I can get that in here. I could connect a USB hard drive, which I have some like files stored on that, which I have connected to the Oppo and I can get that into my system pretty easily. But the Oppo doesn't have streaming apps uh, capability, which is one of the biggest weaknesses to it. Um, and my processor doesn't have streaming apps built in natively to it, I should say. So how do I do that? Well, that's the answer. Now, there are a lot of ways to get streaming, you know, Spotify, whatever, into your, you know, whatever, your soundbar, your speaker system like this or whatever it is. Technically, there are. I mean, I could do that nowadays via the PlayStation 5 down there, right? Or even the PlayStation 3 technically can do that. I can just hook up, you know, Spotify to my phone. Right. And then just over Bluetooth or AirPlay, stream it to the processor, which, again, I've done as well. The reason why I have this, I say all that to say the reason why I have this blue sound node here is because all of those other solutions, when you do that, you don't get access to the highest resolution um, music that you can get from those streaming services. And with a system like this, you really want right high resolution, the highest resolution possible to, to get into the system. Right. So what happens is if you just play, you know, music from Spotify, from your phone or your iPad, which I have over Bluetooth, over AirPlay, it's not going to sound that great. Right. Let's be honest. Um, it's going to sound really compressed. It is really compressed. Um, and, you know, you miss out on a lot. Now, especially services like Tidal and Koba, they have master, you know, quality, high resolution um, files on there. Apple Music as well. I don't really have Apple Music, music subscription right now. That's why I didn't call them out, but Apple Music as well. Lossless, high-res sound. You want to get that in here. And it turns out that all of the devices that you can have in a lot of ways to, to stream stuff really don't allow you to do that <laughs> with the high-res part. So the Blue Sound Node is kind of one of the most popular and affordable high-res streamers you can get. And that's the key thing here. So everything that comes out of this thing, I connect to it directly from my phone, let's say. And then through the app, I can select my songs on Spotify, select my songs on Tidal. And when there is a song that is, you know, high-res, meaning higher than CD quality, right? Super, you know, 192 kilohertz, 24-bit, you know, up to that, I can now you know, play it through there and it's connected directly to my processor. And thus I get the full resolution music experience in this system. So that was like one of those things where I knew I needed to have that before I got the speaker upgrade. because so I knew I wanted to be able to have the highest res possible in here. And it definitely served that purpose. Again, Blue Sound Node is highly regarded, right? It has its own built-in DAC um, digital analog converter that, you know, basically handles the quality of the sound, how to sound, how good it will sound. Um, you know, and that's, you know, it's not the highest grade version of the DAC out there in the world, which is part of the reason why it's cheaper. You know, this is, thing is like $500, I think, of, or maybe $599 now or something like that. It's, you know, it's relatively cheap. They have streamers out there in the world today that's $5,000 easily, right? $10,000, right? So this is a fairly affordable thing, but it gets the job done. It handles the high res. It handles... All of the different apps, Amazon Music as well, Apple, like everything is, is there. So it's a great purchase in that regard. Um, so, yeah, that gets the job done there. Um, I'll touch on that probably a little bit more. Um, let's see. I already did this. So last year um, I talked about these audio cables. So prior to getting these speakers in here, right, 
Um, I wanted to make sure that I, I had, you know, upgraded my audio, my audio cable. So those are the Audio Quest Rocket 88 um, speakers, speaker cables. Sorry. Um, so th those help for sure, you know, to make these things sound as good as they are. I know some of you guys, some of you real true audiophiles that have speakers that are anywhere near this level are probably like, you know, have speaker cables that are probably well beyond that in price, at least, um, if not quality. And that's great. Like I said, I wasn't going to go crazy and spend $5,000 on speaker cables right now. Um, but this is a, no a, a good step up from what I had previously for sure. Um, and definitely, you know, gets me the entry into the entryway, at least, of real high end audio, in, you know, from the speaker cable. So I got those cables for the fronts and for the center here. And they definitely, you know, help do a lot here. So. So that's kind of looking at the front again. Another I'm just going to touch on. I did mention last year. I have a video on this as well. Um, I will point it out here in, in this video. Um, but this is a new TV relative to the last home theater tour. This is the LG G2 83-inch OLED. Um, and I've done a review on this already. But needless to say, it gives me a little bit more size. The last time I had a 77C8 in here. So the exercise helps a lot. I didn't move my seats any closer. So, you know, it helps me get a little bit more immersion. Um, even though it's only six inches, it actually is noticeable, guys. Like, for real, it makes a difference. Um, and then it gives me access to HDMI 2.1, which opens up a lot of doors for that PS5 down there to give me all of the latest and best technology and features for gaming, right? Um, and it does that. I have, you know, HDR, I have um, 120 hertz support um, with uh, at 4K, you know, all that kind of good stuff. Um, low latency mode, VRR, you know, that everything, everything is, <laughs> everything is there. The CV does it all. So in that regard, it's, it, it, it's really cool. Help flesh out the system. What else? What else? So in terms of updates, um, I'm just going to review here. This has not changed. I talked about this in the last video. It's still got the Oppo 205. That's my displayer. It will be forever, I guess, since this are pretty much dying. It still is the ultimate great 4K displayer. It still is a universal music player that can handle DVD audio, C S uh, super audio CDs, regular CDs, DVD, a dual disc, you know, whatever. And I have this, I have my disc collection still, so I'm going to maintain that. Um, that's the Outlaw for my Atmos, the Outlaw amp for my Atmos speakers, and then that's the Parasound 52 Plus, right, for my center and surround still. Um, that's my PlayStation Elite controller. <laughs> I guess that's a new addition. Um, the main thing here that I want to highlight, and again, I've talked about this already last year, um, but this is a brand new processor um, relative to the last video. This is the Anthem AVM90. Uh, if you look up the AVM90, look up reviews, it always gets stellar reviews. It's pretty much considered um, probably the, the ultimate processor that you can get within reason, like under 10 grand. There are other processes out there. I know some of you guys know things like Trinov and Storm. But when you get to Trinov level, you're talking like 20, 30,000 plus. You're talking having, you know, 32 channels of audio, which again, I still have 11 and I don't have any reason or, or thought to go beyond 11 in this space. Um, so even though this processor can handle um, technically 19 channels, I think, um, but 16, you know, main channels at most. So I have a lot of room to grow into with this thing. But needless to say, the sound quality is absolutely superb. It is a noticeable, noticeable step up from my previous Morantz. The room correction, the anthem room correction is also like now, you know, I, I had this thing for over a year when I got these speakers. I definitely had some exercise in patience and, and trying to get things dialed in and trying to get the speakers sounding their best. The Anthem Room Correction helped with that a lot. And it made me um, really de delve into it to understand what it can do. And when I really got to see what it can do, it is freaking amazing. I see why, you know, people, you know, Anthem Room Correction is considered one of the best in the industry. And it's, it's super useful. It's not just because it does certain features better than Dirac or other stuff, but the interface and overall usability of it is really, really good and easily digestible. And Anthem is always working on it. So they have um, a beta program where they have beta updates that you can have access to. But if you don't want to do the experimental stuff, you know, they update this thing pretty, pretty consistently as well. So that part of it is good. There are some like user usability and kind of um, quirks to it 
um, that takes some getting used to. And there are still some bugs as well that could be annoying. But um, overall, I mean, it does what I hoped it would do. You know, the AVM90 is their flagship. It's the best processor Anthem has ever had. It, ha it has, you know, a whole lot of upgraded circuitry, circuitry to in increase the sound quality over the AVM70. You know, so I'm getting a pretty, you know, a, a hefty, hell of a, you know, uh, sound quality, you know, get into my system from this thing. And, and that is really, really good to know. So Anthem AVM90, um, is definitely a big part of my end game, <laughs> um, for now. And, um, you know, over here, I still got the PS5. I still got a P the PS3 I mentioned for some old legacy games and some karaoke stuff. You see the camera still there. The main thing I want to show here, which is the new edition with the speakers is this is an, a new amp. It's still Parasound. But this is the JC5. This is their flagship, absolute top of the line, Halo, John Curl um, Signature certified um, two channel amp. Um, JC5, it is a beast of an amp. Uh, not like overly big because as you see, it's kind of barely just fitting in this space. And it's really not really bigger than the A21 I had before. It is a little bit like taller. It is a little bit heavier, but the overall dimensions is actually pretty similar. And as you see, I'm like right right at the you know <laughs> the edge here but this is a beast of an amplifier is super high quality a great bang for the buck they actually increased the price on this thing because they felt they have new leadership that felt that it was underpriced and they're probably right um so it's it's higher now um, although i got it for before the price went all the way up but um needless to say uh great amplifier power in just my two um parasounds paradigm sorry seven f's personas um 400 watts clean watts into each channel with two channel driven um 600 watts into four ohms so the 400 watts is to eight ohms that's the resistance of the speaker it also the two channels could be bridged into making this a mono block that can output 1200 channel 1200 watts sorry so this is a beefy amplifier there aren't really a whole lot of amplifiers out there that can really do 400 watts into eight ohms um, at any price, to be honest, <laughs> I mean, you know, when you get up to stream prices, of course, things, you know, you start seeing some crazy stuff, but generally speaking, I mean, this, this amplifier is right now is MSRP is like $7,500. Um, anything under 10 grand, you know, there's, there's, there's probably a handful of amps under 10 grand that, that can claim to do 400 Watts into eight ohms. So there's plenty of power here, but it's not just about like brute power. It's about, you know, finesse. Um, and this is an audiophile grade uh, two channel amp, which is one thing I really loved about it. Um, it has dedicated class A power um, up to 12 watts, which may not sound like a lot to some of you guys. But for anyone that knows how how like sound works and how, you know, audio systems work, when you listen to music, for the most part, um, you unless you are blasting it you're probably well under 12 watts most of the time. You know, the wattage only very select and very limited moments when there might be a crescendo for music, one really loud burst on a cymbal, stuff like that, for movies when there's an explosion or something like that. And that's really a limited time where the wattage go up. But normally through normal operation, especially with the music here, um, you're probably, we're probably talking about, you know, again, probably somewhere between one to like, you know, 10 watts tops, right? So 12 watts is going to get most of the operational time, believe it or not. And having Class A, Class A is the ultimate, you know, um, I guess topology in terms of sound quality for amps. It's the holy grail for amps. The problem with Class A is that it requires too big, too much heat, you know, for amps. So you don't really see large watt Class A amps until you start getting into five or six figures with amps. So the idea that this has, you know, a good amount of class A power. And I notice it when you first turn this on, even at the low levels, everything just sounds so good, so smooth, so detailed, you know, like that kind of thing. But when you turn it up, it can really start with the big boy, so to speak. Um, there's no problem me, with me filling in this room when it comes to power here. Um, no problem whatsoever. Uh, especially with these speakers, which are also more efficient than the last speakers I had. So they can play really loud um, and fill up this room with moderate, moderate volume levels. So Anthem JC5, great addition to 
it, this is my amp. Like I really felt like this was my amp. And I really, you know, I thought about other amps. I evaluated other amps, but that one won out still. I, I just like Paradigm for bang for buck. I think they do a great job there. So guys, there it is. Um, my home theater, 2023. For all intents and purposes, like I said, I feel like this room, this room and this space is finally at the vision that I, I have from it, I have for it originally. Um, you know, I feel like it's, it's pretty much done. You know, the painting did wonders, the rec space here, having the extra, you know, seating and accommodating for people. The, um, the Again, the aesthetic and functional differences I made for the audio, for the sound, the equipment that I have and the level equipment I have. I mean, I have flagship products pretty much from everybody. If you notice that, you know, the Paradigm Persona speakers here are flagship from Paradigm. The Anthem AVM90 is their flagship preamp. Um, the Parasound JC5 is the flagship. The Oppo 205 is the flagship. You know, um, it's like, where do you go from there, right? These are all great, reputable companies um, that make, you know, well-renowned products, may have made great products in, in all those cases for decades. And I'm at their flagships, right? <laughs> right? They, you know, where do you go from there? You know, that's kind of what in-game looks like and feels like to me. But it's, it's great to have. It's great for us with the fam. You know, my kid's wife love, love it down here, too, and are happy with everything. So what else could you ask for, right? I mean, that's what Endgame is about. So let me know what you think. Again, have you seen how this space looked two years ago, two and a half years ago, three years ago in my earlier videos? Uh, it is. You got to admit, it's pretty amazing to see the, the transformation and just what some of those details can really do um, for not only the look, but the function and enjoy enjoyment of the space. So let me know what your journey looks like. You know, let me know what you think of, of mine. Um, what other changes, you know, I, you think I can make or should make, should consider. Um, again, I'll touch on, I'll have another video probably to kind of wrap things up, so to speak, for this year. And I can touch on my thoughts on the the real journey to end game and, and what what else? Where else could I go? Right. And I thought about this, of course, like where else could I go? Or is there any other updates or upgrades I can make? And, you know, um, if I really think about it, you know, there's a couple areas where, of course, I can I can say that. Um, but, you know, for the most part, I mean, other than aesthetic room type stuff, you know, updating posters or, you know, stuff like that, like this room is pretty much complete <laughs> for this for this house. Um, so anyway. I really, really appreciate it, guys. Hopefully, you enjoyed this video. True Techno Gamer, please like, subscribe if you made it to this end. I love you. Thank you. We'll talk to you soon.